Hello everyone. This video will show the general rule for transformation of function. That includes the piecewise functions. If y is equal to f of x is a function, then the equation in graphing form transformations of this function can be written as y equals a f of b of x minus h plus k, where our a, b, h, and k are parameters. We remember that the parameter A vertically stretches or compresses a, the graph, while the uh, parameter B horizontally stretches or compresses the graph. On the other hand, this parameter A vertically reflects the graph. So it's either it's going to reflect the graph upside down, while the B reflects the graph horizontally. So it's going to reflect the graph side to side. On the other hand, our parameter h horizontally translates the graph, while the k will vertically translate the graph. So using this equation that we have right here, so how do we transform a piecewise function? Now let's look at some examples. In this example, we are given the graph of the function f of x, which is an example of a piecewise function. Our task is to sketch the graph of f of 2x. So the first step that we're going to do is to determine lattice points on this function. Lattice points are points on the Cartesian coordinate plane that have x and y values that are integer. So an example of a lattice point would be this point right here because the x value is negative 8 and the y value is negative 3. So I can go ahead and write that first dot right here. So that is negative 8 and negative 3. Another lattice point that I can pick from this function would also be this. So our x value is negative 7, our y is 0. So this is negative 7 and 0. I am going to plot more lattice points on this function. Okay, so we can add more of these points on this function here, but for now, let's focus on these dots right here. The next step that I would do is to determine the coordinates for these dots that I've created. I already did the coordinate of negative 8 and negative 3. We also have the negative 7, 0. These are the dots that we need to, I mean, we need to determine their coordinates. And so I'm going to go ahead and write that up here. Okay, our next task is to determine 2x. So I'm going to go ahead and write that in this column right here, 2x. To determine the value for uh, 2x, what I would do is I am going to multiply the x value by 2. So that means this is negative 16. So 2 times negative 8 is negative 16. 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. And then we have 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. And I will do that for the rest of these blanks. Okay, the next task is to determine our f of 2x. So in this column right here, that would be f of 2x. f of 2x means since we already have a 2x here, I can go ahead and write f of our 2x is negative 16. Then we also have f of 2x, our 2x again is negative 14, and we have f of negative 12, and I will do that for the rest of these blanks here. Okay, to determine the value for each of these, we are going to look at the original graph, or the original function f of negative 16, so if x is negative 16, we don't have that value because we're only up to 10 and 11, so this one doesn't exist. It's off of the graph. This one is off of the graph, but we have negative 8. So f of negative 8 is going to be um, negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and write that uh, down here. That's negative 3. f of negative 4. Negative 4 is positive 2. And then we have f of negative 2 is positive 1. And then f of 0 is positive 3. We also have f of positive 2 is 5. And f of positive 4 is 7. So that's 7 right there. 
So what are we going to do now is we will determine more values of x since we actually have missing x values here. So we can add more x values here, especially those that we actually skipped. So if we look at this, we start from 0, negative 1, negative 2. We skipped negative 3. So we can go ahead and write negative 3 right here. And then we also could add negative, so negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, we already have negative 4. We can add negative 5 up here. And then we can go down 0, 1, 2, then we can add positive 3. So again, I'm adding more values of x since we actually have some missing dots here. So let's cover that up and um, determine the values for this. So we don't really need to determine the value for the f of x here because we only need the um, 2x. So this would come out negative 10. This would be negative um, 3 and no, negative 6. So that's a negative 6 because that's 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. And this would be positive 6. So let's determine the values for each of these. So we start with um, f of negative 10. So this is f of negative 10, f of negative 6, and f of positive 6. So let's look it up on the original function, f of negative 10. So negative 10 is having a value of negative 9. And then we also have f of negative 6, so negative 6. The value on the original function is 3. And then we have f of 6, that's a positive 6. The value for that is positive 9. So I'm going to go ahead and write 9 right there. So then we are now ready to sketch the graph. So we start with... Uh, the one that we pair up are these. We are going to pair up the x and the f of 2x. So we start with negative 5 and negative 9. So negative 5 and negative 9. So it's going to sit here. The next dot would be negative 3 and positive 3. 1, 2, 3, positive 3, 1, 2, 3. So it's going to go up here. And then we have positive, positive 3 and 9. Positive 3, then it goes up all the way to 9 up here. And then I will sketch the uh, dots for the rest of these. So I'm going to connect the dots together. If you notice, our value for B is positive 2. Remember that B will horizontally, either horizontally compress or stretch the graph. In this case here, this value 2 here actually horizontally compresses this graph. So the original graph f of x horizontally compressed means this graph was pushed inwards. So it was pushed side to side so that it is compressed and it forms this f of 2x. That's it. If you find this video helpful, consider hitting the like button and consider subscribing for more math videos. See ya!